From New York, Nicole Maliotakis. Uh, Congresswoman, thanks for joining us. So you just voted to hold Garland in contempt for not handing over the audio from uh, President Biden's interval, interview with the special counsel, Robert Hur. Transcript has been released. Why is it so important to Republicans to have the audio released? What exactly do you want from the audio? Well, look, we want to make sure that uh, it matches what the transcript says, and I think that it's important as an oversight uh, procedural uh, issue that we have access to the audio. I think it's just a very simple issue, and it perhaps, I think, as Manu said, it, we probably have to fight it out in court, but when uh, the Oversight Committee and members of Congress request this type of material by subpoena, it should be provided. If that's all you want... Uh, just to make sure that the transcript uh, matches uh, the audio, could you not just ask for a special master to do that? I mean, what Democrats think, I know, look, look CNN wants it too. We want it for journalistic reasons. You guys are politicians. I don't think it, the chances are zero that if you got the audio, that some of that audio, especially the, the less flattering parts of it, might end up in an attack ad. I mean, that's the fear that Democrats have. Look, they, they could fear uh, whatever they'd like. It uh, doesn't mean that they can't, they shouldn't be complying uh, with the subpoena from the House of Representatives. I think it's just as it's cut and dry and simple like that uh, for the same reasons that CNN seeks uh, the audio tape. And uh, but I think that the larger issue here is that it always seems that there's zero transparency. We've had so much difficulty. And it's not just this issue with this administration. Uh, it's multiple issues where we're trying to do our oversight responsibility. We're trying to bring transparency to the people. Um, and, and this is their government, and they deserve to see everything and hear everything. And if there's a subpoena request for something, then it should be provided. It's, it's a shame that we have to actually get to the subpoena uh, position in the first place. I mean, uh, you know, we request information all the time for oversight purposes, and we have difficulty getting. And it's not limited specifically to this administration. I mean, I know, I know one of the issues we're going to talk about is Governor Cuomo. I mean, we, we wrote letters for nearly four Four years to try to get information, uh, simple questions that we've asked, and they just disrespected the House of Representatives. They thought it wasn't important to provide answers to us, and we're seeing that happen uh, time and again, where people feel that they can just violate federal uh, law and what we believe is is proper oversight. So, one more question on this, and then I'll get to Governor Cuomo, who testified behind closed doors yesterday, mm -hmm. and you were there. So, I do want to ask about that. Um, you weren't in Congress at the time, but I wouldn't say that Republican, uh, your Republican colleagues exactly uh, ran to vote to hold Attorney General Bill Barr in contempt of Congress when he refused to hand over all the details of the Mueller investigation uh, and the unredacted report. Would you have voted to hold him in contempt of Congress as well? Yeah, perhaps. I was not here at the time, so I, I don't know the sp particulars of what occurred. Uh, but I do believe that there is a responsibility here for oversight. And certainly as a member who has been involved in the Ways and Means Committee, uh, you know, we were the ones who delivered the uh, IRS whistleblowers that were, played a big role in this, in this conviction of uh, Hunter Biden. Uh, I think oversight is important. The American people deserve to know what happens, even if it's happening behind closed doors, especially when it's happening behind closed doors. So. Uh, while I, while I, I don't know the particulars that you're mentioning, I think we do need to be consistent. So let's talk about Behind Closed Doors, because yesterday, Behind Closed Doors, former New York Governor Andrew Cuomo participated in an interview uh, with the subcommittee on the coronavirus pandemic, and it centered on the issue of the guidance from his administration in New York that led to nursing homes and long-term care facilities uh, being forced to admit contagious COVID-19 pa patients during the pandemic, which led to the deaths of thousands of seniors in New York uh, listen to your fellow New York uh, Congresswoman, Republican Elise Stefanik, after the interview. And I said, does he have accountability? And despite hours and hours of trying to blame everybody else, in the final moments of the deposition, he said, ultimately, as the New York governor, there is accountability for how they handled nursing homes. Was that your takeaway? Did, did Governor Cuomo uh, acknowledge accountability and responsibility for what happened? You know, it's unfortunate, uh, Jake, as somebody who has had constituents who lost loved ones in the nursing homes, to hear the governor say that he doesn't have remorse or that he would even change anything today if he had the ability to edit that directive that came from his administration to nursing homes mandating them to take individuals. To hear him say that he does would not even make a single change today, that he would simply communicate it more and explain more so nursing homes could understand that they could reject individuals, which was certainly not what the 
the mandate said. It is not what the impression of the nursing homes were at the time, nor was it the impression that the local elected officials who were relaying concerns from the nursing homes to the administration, it wasn't our impression either. Uh, what I would say is it was, un it was unfortunate. The governor really tried to shift blame and point fingers. Um, you know, first he tried to say that he and the DOH commissioner, Department of Health commissioner, did not know anything about this directive until a month after it took effect, saying that it was when a media inquiry came to him that he first found out about it. I find that really hard to believe. And I think people who saw the governor for 111 days do briefings, um, and he was so involved and so hands-on, uh, I, I, don't, I don't think that anybody really believes that. And, and to this day, to not know who that staff member was, there was no internal investigation if it was somebody who went rogue and did this without approval. So he tried to blame them, then he tried to blame CDC and the federal government saying that the guidelines were mirroring what the federal government recommendations were, but that was not the case. Right. Um, the, the federal government language was very different. That was can versus shall. And he allowed no testing for those individuals who came into the nursing homes. And then he blamed the nursing homes themselves, saying that they didn't understand the directive, that they had the ability to turn them away if they couldn't care for them. Um, a Republican uh, on the committee told me that the Democrats also, some of them, had tough questions for Governor Cuomo. Is that, is that your impression as well? Oh, yeah. Uh, certainly there was a lot of dissatisfaction among all the members, Republicans and Democrats, and a lot of tough questions. The Democrats uh, focused a lot of their questions, questions on the underreporting of deaths in the state of New York. Um, and, you know, the, the other issue was the personal friends and family that were receiving tests, COVID tests. So here on one hand, the nursing homes were prohibited from testing individuals that were being forced upon them from the hospitals, right, according to this mandate, but then they were making these, uh, going out of their way to test anyone, whether it was personal or professional, that was coming into contact with the governor. So it really was a double standard there, and he received a lot of questions and a lot of heat uh, from the Democrats on that particular topic. Yep, I remember that. <laughs> All too well. Republican Congresswoman Nicole Maliotakis, thank you so much. Thank Appreciate you. your time today. U.S. Attorney General Mary